I'm Nilesh Karani from Kings. Welcome to the Soul to Soul series. This is episode 5, The Types of Shoes. So the first model of shoe I want to cover with you is the Oxford. Now why is an Oxford called an Oxford? There is a particular characteristic to it. So the fundamental characteristic of an Oxford is that the eyelets of the laces are on the vamp of the shoe. Now this particular model is called the whole cut because there is just one cut on a piece of leather to make this shoe. The second Oxford I want to cover is the wingtip. As you see, this particular portion of the shoe resembles wings of a bird and that's why it's called a wingtip. And this particular model is called a cap toe. It's called a cap toe mainly because there is a cap in the front of the shoe. And uh, in this particular one there is some broguing over here. So we can call this a quarter brogue as well. The next oxford I want to cover is the saddle oxford. As you can see the center portion of the shoe has a particular portion which actually resembles the saddle on a horse and that's why that particular model is called a saddle oxford. The next shoe uh, model that I want to cover with you is called the derby. Now uh, derby is also a laced shoe just like the oxford. However, there is a very I would say prominent difference between the two shoes. If you had noticed uh, what I said about the oxford was that the eyelets of the laces were on the body of the shoe. However, in the derby it's not the case. In the derby the eyelets of the shoe are on a separate piece of leather and not on the shoe itself. This particular model of the derby is called the plain toe derby because it's simply a plain toe. All right? This is how a plain toe derby looks like. And the other derby that we have as a model is called the long wing derby where if you see the wings like I explained earlier the in the wing tip here the wings extend till the end of the shoe and that's why this particular model of the shoe is called the long wing derby there is another model of the derby which is called the split toe derby if you see the model here you can see there's a split at the toe of the shoe and that is why it is called the split toe and on the vamp you will see that there is an apron which is a very classic style of derby which makes the shoe very interesting because of its characteristics you may ask why is derby called a derby and why is this construction in this particular way so the history goes that the earl of derby had very thick feet and his feet would not get inside an oxford and that's why some shoemaker came up with the idea of a derby now let me explain how it works so as you see this is an oxford and this is a derby now if you see an oxford has only this much of an opening for somebody to insert their foot all right and people with a higher instep would have difficulty entering their foot inside an oxford however a derby has got a much better opening and people with a higher instep can actually opt for this kind of a shoe which in which you, they can enter the foot very easily so the next model i want to cover are the monk straps it's pretty simple they are very similar to the oxford except that they don't have laces and they have a strap going across to fasten the shoe now this one is a single monk as there's only one strap over here and this particular model is a double monk because there are two straps over here so the next model of shoes i want to cover is the loafers the most popular loafer is this particular one which was actually made in france it was although made popular in america 
by Ivy League college students who used to store a penny to call their parents on weekends and they would store the penny in this notch. The next loafer which is very popular is called the tassel loafer. It's called the tassel loafer because of these tassels over here. And historically these tassels actually were laces which had their endings as tassels but some ingenious shoemaker came up with the idea and he cut off the laces and just put the tassels on top of the shoe making them very interesting. The next loafer I want to cover is the bear loafer. Now the bear loafer as the name suggests is bear. It's got no decoration on it and it is just a simple shoe which in fact looks like a slipper as well. There is uh, another model of the loafer which is very popular which is called the bit loafer. The bit loafer was made popular by Gucci when Gucci actually put in a horse bit on the top of the shoe giving it a very decorative idea to it and that's how that particular loafer is called the bit loafer. The next one is called the bow loafer. The bow loafer again if you see has just got a bow in front of it as decoration which gives a very aesthetic value to the shoe making it a bit different from the penny and the tassel loafer. The next model of the shoe that I want to cover are the boots. Now I'm not too sure whether you know about this that in the early 1900s people actually only wore boots with their suits. There were no shoes at, in those times because the payments were very uneven and there were no footpaths for people to walk in and people had to protect their ankles and that's why they only wore boots for formal occasions. So this is one of the finest boots that we have. This is called the chakka boot. The chakka boot it's ankle high only and one of the popular places for a chakka boot was the polo club. The players who played polo or the people who went watching often wore chakka boots for the event. So the chakka boot is actually very versatile. It gives you a casual look when you're wearing it with jeans, when you're wearing it with chinos. It also has a rebellion sort of an attitude to it. You could be sporting a chakka boot with jeans and rocking it with a guitar on a porch and it would just be an ideal look that you can give yourself. So the next boot model I want to cover is a Chelsea boot. This is often called a lazy man's boot because you just have to insert your foot inside this and you're ready to go. All right. It also has an elastic element to it and due to that it just becomes a bit easier for you to insert your foot inside. If you get a black boot you can actually wear it on a suit as well. So just remember although this has a casual element to it if you have a black boot you can pair it with a suit which will look dapper. The next boot I want to cover is called the Balmoral boot. Now why it's called the Balmoral boot because it has a particular characteristic to it. There is a separation of the shoe which goes from the front all the way to the back. All right. That's why it's called the Balmoral boot. There is a separation of the top and the bottom with this particular stitch over here. The next one is a wingtip boot. As you can see it has wingtips just like I mentioned with the Oxfords. And uh, this also can be quite formal if worn in black with a suit. And uh, this also can be beautifully paired with jeans and chinos in different colors to give you an interesting look. The next model I want to cover is the Jodhpur boot. Now the Jodhpur boot is very popular with uh, people who go for horse riding. As you can see the construction of the shoe is done in such a way that you can actually insert your foot, tie it up with a belt and uh, fasten the shoe very tight so that it doesn't come off and it gives you security as you are riding the horse. The next one is the Octavian boot that uh, we're going to cover. The Octavian boot has a particular characteristic 
of a dynamic uh, styling and aesthetics to it. You can see over here that it has got a couple of notches on the side which actually fasten the shoe but it actually just gives it an aesthetic and a decorative look to it. The next I want to cover is uh, the model of slippers. Now this is a very popular slipper which is called the Belgian slipper. It is extremely casual and you can see that many people nowadays are sporting this with chinos and even shorts and even for beach wear. This is another form of slipper which is called the double monk slipper. Here the double monk is just for decoration. It doesn't serve any function as such but when worn on chinos and semi-formal trousers they look very dapper they make a person look very interesting now i want to cover a few casual models that we have the first one being the driver this is very popular with people who just want to slip on and get out of the house very quickly it's called the driver mainly because of the uh, particular sole coming till the back of the shoe and it doesn't wear out as you go for a drive because the sole extends till the back of the shoe. The next casual model that we have is a sneaker which is in the double monk. Again the double monks over here are not functional, they are very decorative. Next one is a tennis sneaker that we have. You can see it is a minimalistic shoe with no decoration as such. It just has a sole and a top and it's in one color. Then we have a jogger. The speciality of the jogger is that it's got a Vibram sole in it. I will talk about the Vibram sole in another episode. Now what is the uh, beauty of this is this is extremely lightweight. You can take it for a walk, you can take it for a jog and uh, it has got elements of suede uh, and mesh over here making it very interesting so we also do golf shoes for men and they can be done in any model that i spoke about earlier whether it's an oxford derby or loafers now here i have a particular golf shoe in double monk okay these are constructed um, in waterproof material and have got soft spikes on it now soft spikes apparently give a very good traction on any terrain and they give energy velocity back when you get into a swing we have shoe models for ladies as well now here we have an oxford for the ladies as you can see the styling is very similar to a men's but its profile is a bit more narrower just for a lady's foot okay then we also have a derby just like the men's derby except the profile is a bit more narrower a bit more slimmer we also have elements of ribbon as laces just to make the shoe model more feminine as you can see then we have also got the double monks for ladies as you can see here okay and we have something called the kilti monk for ladies this is very similar to a double monk except that it has a kilt over here which gives a very feminine look to the shoe and last but not the least we have a slippers for women as you can see they are very simple shoes nothing too complicated but we can add decoration to the shoe uh, when you're customizing the shoe we also have some special edition shoes that you can see on our website. I have this one particular one over here which apparently has got a world map on it and if you see there is an engraving of the world map on the shoe and also there is a patina done on the shoe which is called the reverse patina where the lighter portions of the shoe are on the edges and the darker portions are in the center of the shoe similarly we have more special edition shoes on our website you can check them out and see uh, what fits you well so these are the model of the shoes that we have on our website these can all be customized to your liking 
you can go to the custom shop option on our website and have a look at the customization options for it. This is the end of episode 5. If you liked our content, please like the video and share it with others. You may subscribe to the channel if you like what you saw. If you have any questions or comments, put them below uh, in the comments section and I'll revert back to you. Thank you for watching. This is Nilesh Karani from Kings. Be different.